Well, good morning and welcome everybody. We're so glad that you're joining us on this gorgeous morning. If you're feeling down, I have some good news. Officially, we are at the half point to Christmas, so it's almost here. <laughs> we encourage you to sing along as you are comfortable. We're gonna start out with one of my favorite songs to start out with. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. It is so nice to have you here with us. My name is Johan. If you are joining us online, a special word of welcome to you, to those of you who are friends and family of Ali and Garrett. It's very nice to have you here with us today. If you're able, would you please stand with me and let us start our time of worship together with a call to worship. Welcome this day to the house of our God. We are greeted in peace and in love. Welcome this day to the worship of our Creator. We worship in hope and with grace. Welcome this day to our community of faith. We are here, sisters and brothers in Christ, so let us worship God. If you can, let us stay standing for a few more moments as we open uh, together with a song.
next few moments I invite you to take for yourself, I invite you to be intentional about removing from your awareness, from your mind, those things that you may have lined up for the rest of today, the things that you may be anticipating this week. Take these next few moments for yourself quietly as a spiritual time before God to help you center, to help you focus, notice and pay attention to your breathing and as you draw breath, allow it to settle you down and bring your awareness now before God. Father, when we have busyness fill each and every day, work, commitments, travel, projects, it is so easy to forget that we have you as a shepherd who is there to guide us, who is there to support us. Dear Lord, in these next few moments, hear us as we acknowledge to ourselves how the busyness has kept us from acknowledging whose we are. We are part of your fold. You are our good shepherd. Dear Lord, in these next few moments, give us the courage to admit to you when we did not act like those who belong to you, when we left the good undone or unsaid, and how that which was not love or even ungodly was what we thought or said or even did. So here, dear Lord, in these next few moments, our silent prayers of personal confession. And though I walk the darkest path, I will not fear evil, for you are with me, and your rod and staff are the comfort I need to know. And I will trust. I will in trust. You, I will trust in you. And I will trust. I will trust. In you, I will trust in you. For your endless mercy. make the resolution to trust in God and that God's goodness will lead us home. God is merciful and God is just. God forgives that which is behind us. Not only does God forgive us, God restores to us 
that ability to be that son, that daughter of God that only you can be. If you're able, would you please stand with me and as an expression of this assurance, let us say these words together. They come from Romans 8. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand and in which we hold fast, that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us sing together in praise. received from Christ is that peace that we invite you now to pass to those that are standing near you and do not overcrowd the baby. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's streaming to YouTube but it's not going to Facebook. Good morning. Nice to see you. Great. Nice to have you here, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. A couple of housekeeping things before we continue. If you are arriving at around 15 minutes after the time we start worship, it is not a form of punishment. It is an act of security that we lock the doors in the back, uh, which, we, which means that the only access to the building are the, uh, the doors uh, in the front as an attempt for us, like I say, to be prudent with uh, healthy and safety concerns. If you've not yet joined our Facebook page, which is the private page, a private group that is, uh, we'd love for you to do that. That is where we share news that relates to the family and within the family only. It is not published uh, to the Wildwood web. This is where we do things as families do that they don't want anybody else to see. Uh, thank you so much for those of you who have signed up to provide for the reception after worship. Uh, Lynn and Barbara, where are you? Thank you very much. Uh, it is today. Is it Coquille Saint Jacques uh, today, uh, Barbara, that you're serving, or what would it be? <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, if you've not yet signed up for a church dinner, July 14, it's a Thursday evening, uh, downtown Enzo's. There is a sign-up sheet in the corner. You can also just do that online or let us know. We'd love for you to be a part of that. On July 28th, uh, taking a trip to uh, the Metropolitan Museum of Art and lunch uh, at the Loeb Boathouse in Central Park. Also a sign-up sheet for that uh, in there. Uh, we will have a short um, conducted tour of the Metropolitan, 45 minutes, after which you will have time, of course, then to do uh, and explore the Met all on your own. Community Congregational Church is a Protestant church. As a Protestant church, it observes only two sacraments. I'm tempted to quiz you. The first, of course, is communion. Good morning, Kwaku. Uh, the second uh, is baptism. We are honored this morning to share in this milestone moment of baptism as I invite up to the front Ellie and Garrett and Allison and Jason and little baby Hazel. Children, Lord, in faith and prayer, we baptize in your name. Let them your covenant mercy share as we your faith grow. 
Garrett and Ali, I'm tempted to say that it was not too long ago that we stood together in the front uh, of the Lodge Sanctuary at another one of the milestone moments that the two of you have had. Our church has been honored to be a part of that. Today is a very different occasion, and in some ways the chairs uh, symbolize the significance of it, because when we did the wedding, if you can remember, Garrett, uh, everyone sat in pews that faced the front, and you were standing in the front sort of by yourselves. You had the bridal party, of course, but everyone else was sort of away from you. Baptism as a sacrament brings everybody around us. So right in the middle of this, at the heart of the sacrament, is this act that is executed, that takes place in the midst of the whole family of faith. And they are literally sitting all around us today. Not just your family and friends, but also the members of our church's family of faith. And that is the significance of baptism, is that it welcomes a little one in our tradition, like Hazel, into our family of faith. And so she becomes a part of our entity of people that, that follow God. But she is uh, cute and sweet as she is, and she is wearing a great-grandmother's <coughs> baptismal robe, uh, Irish silk, is it? Irish linen. Irish linen, sorry. Uh, great as all of that is, she is in some ways participating without knowing that she's participating, because the two of you are assuming responsibility. So this is at once a communal event and a family event, but it is also a deeply personal event where the two of you come together with friends and family and others, but before God to yet again make a series of promises and commitments. <laughs> and at the heart of this commitment today is your commitment to raise her and to create an environment in your home where the values and the virtues that you espouse and that you cultivate, that would be the climate that would nurture her and that that would grow her. All of us are spectators to that. These guys over here, and let me just say this, that typically I make a wisecrack about godparents having to pay for college and so such things. And I was trying to go there and I was told that early this morning, Allison and Jason, as a good sister and a brother-in-law, handed them a card with a commitment that they had already started such a fund. So, so much as all of the support and that presence is here, this is for you a deeply quiet moment of understanding how important it is for you to seek and pursue the truth so that you can teach the truth. So our first question is whether in, in bringing a little Hazel to baptism, whether you reaffirm your faith in God. If you do, will you say we do? We do. And then whether you promise to live and to teach this faith to her as she lives and grows as a sweet little child of God. If you do, will you say we do? We do. Beyond the 529. <laughs> One of the hardest things in this day and age where people are so quick to say to each his own, and that's their business, but then people will still criticize others behind their backs. One of the duties that you could take on as godparents is in love and in support to be constructive and supportive. Because who here knows what to do and how to do it and when to do it? You as godparents can take on that responsibility to be supportive to them, to help them find answers, and if they get it dead wrong, to be able to say, listen, Garrett, 18 hours a day is a long day, maybe it's time to go home. Do you promise your love and your support to Ali and to Garrett and Hazel as they grow as a small little family of faith? If you do, will you please answer, we do. And then to all of you, those of you who are members of our congregation and family of faith, those of you who are friends and family, do you promise your love and your support to little Hazel as she lives and grows as a child of God? If you do, will you please answer, we do. Thank you. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, I pray that through your Holy Spirit, you touch this water so that it becomes a symbol of something deeper and something far lasting. I pray that it become the mark that we place on Hazel 
and that so your Holy Spirit places its stamp on her as a child of God. I pray, dear Lord, that you bless the commitments and the promises made here today to the honor and the glory of your name and your kingdom. Amen. Garrett, why don't you... Let me see if I... Is she taking a nap? Would you look at that? She is such a cutie. Oh, my goodness. Ali and Garrett, would you name your child? Hazel and Wibben, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please pray with me, dear Lord. I pray your blessing on this child. I pray that she lives and grows as a disciple of Christ, a faithful member of your family of faith. Amen. continue our time of worship now with an opportunity for you to give tangible expression of your personal awareness of God's goodness, of God's blessing in your life in the form of our morning offering. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, these next few moments we dedicate our prayers to all of those across all of our world who find themselves in hardship. Dear Lord, our thoughts and prayers remain with those in Ukraine. Our thoughts and prayers remain with those who are recovering as victims from gun violence. Dear Lord, our thoughts and prayers are with all of those who, under the present economy, find themselves in financial hardship. Our thoughts and prayers are with all of those who recover from surgery. Dear Lord, our thoughts and prayers are with all of those who are lonely, those who find themselves getting old. Dear Lord, here as we also call out aloud now the names of those for whom we hold particular concern.
Dear Lord, we pray for each and every one mentioned by name and for all of those to whom we referred in sweeping ways. But we pray, dear God, also for those whom we love and those whom we live with. We pray, dear God, for our own ability to discern truth from fiction, what is true from what is false, what is godly from what is ungodly. We pray, dear Lord, for the courage for parents to raise a sweet baby. We pray, dear Lord, for the courage for godparents and grandparents who watch a baby grow. We pray, dear Lord, for the courage of presence and the courage of paying attention. I pray, dear Lord, that we enjoy the gifts that you place before us, that we value the opportunity that you grant each and every one of us to live a life fulfilled, to have a life of flourishing, of joy. I pray that you forgive us if we focus on those things that distract us or depress us or frustrate us or simply angry and make us angry. I pray, dear God, that you allow us a moment of honesty to recognize the goodness, the generosity, the graciousness that fill our lives every day. I pray that you enable us to enjoy these gifts, look upon them as gifts that we have received by your grace and nothing that we are entitled to. I pray that you show us how we can go and be supportive and share some of our gifts with those who have less. I pray, dear God, that you enable us to come out of the retreat that COVID put on us, to come back together again, and to remind each other of how we are social animals, how we are one big family, how we all have a common humanity. I give thanks to God that in spite of how many of us there may be, you know each and every one of us by name. And so we can come to you and share with you and be with you knowing that you know us, that you love us, that you are with us. I give thanks to God and I pray this in the name of the one who came to show us the way, the truth, and the life. Your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying these words together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Pastor Johan uh, managed to put the baby to sleep. I'll do my best not to put the rest of you to sleep. Please listen to the first reading from the book of Galatians. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came so that we might be reckoned as righteous by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, we are all children of God through faith. As many as you were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek there is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs, according to the promise. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. The second reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 17. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you. And now I'm no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. I came across this uh, song from a contemporary Christian band called King and Country. I don't know about the name, but the song is good. Has life hit you so hard that you've been knocked down? Have you gone too far to find the middle ground? Did they raise you so high just to pull you back down? Have you been so lost you can never be found? Because I've been real. I've been fake, been a sinner, been a saint. I've been right, I've been so wrong. Yeah, I've made many mistakes. I don't know what it's like to be you. You don't know what it's like to be me. What if we're all the same in different kinds of ways? Can you, can you relate? We both know what it's like to be hurt. We both know what it's like to feel pain, but I think it's safe to say we're on to better days. Can you, can you relate? Have you ever been left when you should have been loved? Has there ever been a time when you stayed but you should have run? Because I've been real, I've been fake, been a sinner, been a saint. I've been right, I've been so, so wrong yet. I've made my mistakes. Can you relate? I don't know what it's like to be you. You don't know what it's like to be me, but by the grace of God, we'll see each other's heart. Can you? Can you relate? <clears throat> Good question, right? Can you relate? Can I relate? I don't mean can I vaguely imagine being in somebody else's shoes. I don't mean, can I theoretically make an effort to see things from someone else's perspective? I don't mean that. I mean, can we truly relate? As in, can I be in a relationship with someone who's not like me? Can I see their heart in the words of the song? Let me propose this to you. We do this. Christian thing. We baptize our children, we give to the church, we give to mission, we sponsor programs to feed the food insecure, we contribute to the communities around us, not because it's just the right thing to do, not just because of that. It's not just a project. 
to which we contribute out of our comfortable position. We do this because we are connected. We do this because we are connected. We give because we recognize that everyone involved in the giving and receiving is part of us. Let me say that again. Everyone, everyone of the people affected by our doing, by our giving, is part of us. As Jesus prayed in the scripture we just read, so that they may be one as we, you and I, the Father in Jesus, are one. Every family who benefits from the food we collect, every person on the receiving end, on the giving end of our mission work, everyone who derives a salary from a successful mission we sponsor around the world, everyone who gains access to, I don't know, clean drinking water, because of our giving. Every orphan who finds opportunity for education and betterment, every recipient of a micro loan that allows them to buy a goat, know, and then a second goat, and improve their condition. Everyone involved, everyone involved in what we do is part of us. You might be thinking, I don't know. How can they be part of, the, of us? Yeah. Granted, it's a part of us we don't yet know. But part of us, nevertheless. Think about this. Our shared humanity requires that we recognize ourselves in one that we don't know. There's something equivalent in nature. It's the biggest living organism on Earth. It's not a whale. It's not the mammoth or some of the dinosaurs or other kinds of sort that roam the Earth. It's the aspen tree. The aspen tree. I don't know if you've ever had the opportunity to see an aspen tree patch. It's a single root system. One single root system extending for miles in all directions, feeding and nourishing thousands of individual trees. The beauty of this organism is that it channels resources from where they are abundant to where they are, they are scarce, so that the trees that form the patch all get the opportunity to grow and reach for the sun Warning, though, because this wonderful positive characteristic that the patch has, it's also its biggest peril. See, when there is contamination, pollution in the soil, that pollution spreads all over, all over the patch. It doesn't affect just one or two trees, it affects them all. The health of one results in the health of the other. Kind of an interesting metaphor for Christian life, isn't it? <clears throat> As the Apostle Paul writes, for in Christ Jesus we are all children of God through faith. As we are baptized into Christ, we have been clothed with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek, there is no longer slave or free, there is no longer male or female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. Friends, we live in a culture of categories, don't we? <clears throat> Excuse me. We live in a culture of classes, of divisions. Political parties again talk to each other. The us and them kind of division. A culture of fractured relationship and crumbling communication. We find it difficult to relate, as the song said. We find it difficult to connect many, too many, given up altogether, trying to. Well, <clears throat> there's really nothing new to it. The Apostle Paul, writing to the Galatians, reminds them of the very same categories. All right, fine, they were, had different names. You know. I don't know anybody who's been accused of being a Greek. Uh, I'm Italian, so maybe that's, that's uh, you know, a category in itself. 
Um, but it's basically the same principle, right? Who's in and who's out? Oh, sure. Some of the old categories are still present today. But the message is the same. At the end of the day, what these categories are telling us is who belongs and who doesn't. You over there, myself over here. Wrong, Paul says, wrong, look. Paul needs not explain the implication of these categorizations. He doesn't need to tell them that the Greeks are not the same as the Jews, that the free are better off than the slaves, duh, that women don't have the same rights as men and cannot hold property except as delegates of a male relative. Those are the categories of the day. And so in the face of society's effort to pigeonhole everyone into rigid, impenetrable, unsurmountable category, Paul picks up Christ's message that we are all one. We belong to each other. We are connected at the core of our common humanity. So you might be thinking, some of you at least, that I'm trying to sell you on, on this idealistic, you know, kumbaya type of thing. Wouldn't that be nice if this all was like I'm describing? Maybe a utopian world where no one has any ill intent, no one is looking out just for ourselves, for themselves, no one cuts you off in traffic, and everyone, everyone is imbued with such a spirit of generosity and regard for others that it would make Mother Teresa blush. Wouldn't that be nice? Well, I'm not that naive, folks. Been around for a while now. I'm simply describing the kingdom of God. What we have known from the beginning regarding God's intention for creation. I am simply describing a view of the world where we realize that we are all connected in such a way that what we do for and to others affects us all in a direct way. I am very well aware of the difficulties of this proposal. Am I to accept the connection with the unsavory characters who are determined to take advantage of me? Absolutely not, for goodness sake. Sometimes I have difficulties connecting with some of my own adult children who think uh, that I am a conveniently located, open 24 hours a day ATM machine. Does the connection, the common roots that I'm talking about extend to those who will do you harm if they were able? Well, if the life of Christ is any indication, the answer is yeah. We are one with the taker and the giver, with the thief and the giver, with the priest and the abuser, with the abuser and the victim, with the hacker and the slacker, with the achiever and the receiver. Yes, we're all one. We're all the same in so many different ways, like the sun does. And if we're all the same, if there is a space for individual achievement in God's design for creation, are, are we like, oh, I don't know, the Borg? In, if you're a follower of Star Trek, right, you know what the Borg is, right? Are we to succumb to the, uh, I don't know, universal uh, directive of the collective? Is resistant futile? Absolutely not. Even the aspen tree is composed of individual trees, and those trees grow at their own pace. They put out leaves in their own time and with their own individual unique details. But at the very foundation of their existence, that is a common root system on which they all depend, to which they are all connected, from which they derive sustenance and support. Our individuality does not require individualism. 
Individuality does not require disconnection from creation. Rather, our individuality is the manifestation of God's creative expanse. God did not intend for creation to be segmented into us and them. The Holy Spirit did not create a collection of islands separated from one from the other by a sea of otherness. The Spirit of God created a web of love, a tapestry of an unimaginable diversity, a quilt of unlimited colors, a symphony of infinite resonance with all the notes of the universe. We do this Christian thing, not just because it's the right thing to do, but because in Christ, we are one. Because the music of our doing, of our giving, is just one of the many parts in God's amazing concert of love. May the Holy Spirit enable us to do so. Amen. Please rise and join us in our closing song. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remain with you one and all. Amen. Amen.